Well, so as said, uh, you will have to use a lot of your imagination. And when I say things, just uh, well, try to have it in your mind or something. So it will be a Rustdoc beyond the documentation. You can enjoy it. <laughs> so first, why am I? So I'm the Rustdoc team leader since uh, recently. Uh, I'm also part of the documentation team, the docs.rs team, and the dev tools team. So you kind of see uh, some kind of pattern, I think, I think point. So uh, we started working on Rust in uh, 2015, I think. So since then, uh, a lot of things have uh, happened. So. And uh, my main focus uh, currently is Rust doc and more globally documentation. So uh, I have to work on docs.rs and uh, a bit everything dot related. So I tried to show how we were able to provide documentation and most things that we have, which are pretty nice now. So first, what is uh, Rust doc? So Rust doc is uh, a tool uh, provided uh, alongside the compiler and cargo which is uh, used uh, to generate uh, documentation, as you may guess. Uh, you can uh, do a bit more, but we'll go back uh, to that uh, later on. Uh, yeah, I think it's kind of oh, most... I am, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's Rustdoc. So, Rustdoc, uh, Res uh, yeah, as you can... Uh, you will have to mind it, but... You, have, uh, you can uh, use it uh, multiple ways, like uh, directly through RustDoc, and you give it a file and it uh, works. But uh, when you start uh, having uh, dependencies, it's getting a bit tricky, and the command line is getting uh, quite long. So uh, welcome back to makefile uh, era. It's blinking. <laughs> blinking. Yeah, so now you can stop having in your mind, just read. So, like I was saying, you can use it uh, directly uh, through the command line, or you can use cargo doc, which is making things uh, much simpler, so you don't have to mind about all the dependencies and everything, you just cargo doc and uh, everything is done uh, in the background, and uh, it's pretty nice. And you can even uh, have your uh, web browser open and uh, going to your uh, page uh, to your documentation, just add uh, dash dash open and that's pretty much it. It's very convenient. So yeah, fun fact, uh, that's uh, something uh, we used uh, for some who don't know it uh, to, uh, we have error indexes and uh, you can, uh, well, we needed uh, to have something to generate a markdown page, so RustDoc can actually render and convert uh, Markdown from uh, to HTML. So if uh, at some point you need a converter, it works pretty well. So documenting. Uh, we tried to focus on having documentation done as much uh, inside the, the, the code as possible, because in most languages, the documentation and the code is generally uh, splitted, and uh, you have to rely on tools that are not official, in Rust, uh, we had the luck that some people uh, came in uh, pretty early, just uh, took uh, the compiler IST and converted it uh, into uh, HTML. So to do so, you can uh, have uh, the, document, uh, the documents like that. So <laughs> slash slash uh, dash, uh, no, not dash, bang, Exc bang. Exactly, exclam exclamation mark, uh, mark sorry, uh, is uh, to um, document the current module. And uh, if you just uh, put a slash slash slash, it's to uh, document uh, the following uh, item. So in here, it will be the function, and uh, the previous one will be for the current module. And considering as we are at the top level, it will be uh, the create itself. And uh, that is actually syntax uh, syntactic uh, sugar. So normally, you have to write this, which is the same, but a lot less sexy. Let's say it like that. But if you want to do tricky things with uh, the documents, uh, you will have to use it. So most people don't really care about that, and it's fine. So yeah, actually, RustDoc uh, is a very nice tool <laughs> to discover things that are implemented on your types through your dependencies. It's notably the blanket implementations. So when you have, a, you implement a trait on a generic type. So for instance, you implement a 
full trait uh, on every type implementing debug, then obviously all the types you will declare that implement debug will have it, but unless uh, you actually know that in uh, your dependencies you have one doing that, you won't be able to see it, and Rustdocs uh, come in and provide uh, this, uh, those blanket implementations. It was actually added very recently because uh, we had to target directly uh, the internal compiler virtual machine, which was, uh, well, it was crazy time. And uh, that works pretty well now. And we have also the auto traits. So for instance, uh, send and sync. The, a few more, but let's uh, remain on those two. So if you have uh, primitive types, there will be uh, at least a uh, sync or sync. One of them will be implemented, and you will see it uh, directly uh, in the documentation. You don't have to uh, go through your code and just testing. You can see it, which is, again, very convenient, and you, it allows you to prevent uh, time loss. So, uh, again, to help you on your documentation, uh, Rustdoc added uh, the same uh, lint system that Rust has, so now you can uh, use directly lint in Rustdoc. Uh, and by default, they are just warnings, but you can just uh, deny everything in case uh, you want to, pr to provide a, a framework. It's actually very useful. And uh, the first one is uh, in case you have an item, module, uh, function, struct, uh, everything, that is uh, lacking uh, documentation. And the second one is in case you like a code example inside your doc comment, which is something that I'm trying to enforce uh, through uh, all the documentation. So far, not so good. We'll see later. Yeah, so now, beyond documentation. So actually, when you provide uh, and write a code example inside your documentation, they are tested when, they, uh, when you run a Rust doc. So for instance, in here, if you run cargo test, cargo again, all the, uh, the code examples inside will be run. So in here, you will have uh, your code uh, failing in case you run it. But since uh, you have uh, the no run uh, tag on your uh, code example, it will be not, uh, not run, just uh, tested as uh, does it compile. But it's tested. Uh, thanks to that, you can actually have a lot less uh, of uh, all the uh, how to say, um, API test uh, to be sure that uh, everything is up to date. And at the same time, you can provide documentation. So it's a big time. Uh, you earn a lot of time uh, once again. Very convenient, and that's something uh, we worked uh, on a lot lately. Uh, you have a lot more commands uh, and uh, tags that you can use on the code example, so I will come back to this a bit later. So, like I said, uh, when you want to run doc test, uh, if you want to run specifically the doc test, uh, you just cargo test dash dash doc, and only the doc test will be run. If you run cargo test, it will be also the, all the tests, actually. Everything marked as uh, shebang, uh, paren, and uh, test. So, like I said, we ha you have uh, more tags. <laughs> So uh, you can, in case you, have, uh, you are currently writing uh, the code, uh, your code, your API isn't stable yet, you can use uh, allow fail, which allow you to fail, obviously. <laughs> if you want to be, uh, if you are writing a proc macro or macro, you can use compile fail to check that uh, some, uh, some code is specifically uh, failing, which once again is very convenient in case you want to provide uh, some nice uh, errors to the users. And uh, well, with the rising of the Rust editions, uh, we had to uh, handle that uh, as well in Rust. So you can uh, specify, I don't want to support uh, the, I don't want it to be tested into the last edition, so put it into the 2015. That's fine. You can ignore, because you don't want it to be tested or anything. You just want to have it. Uh, to be noted that uh, actually compile fail and uh, ignore are marked into the documentation as such. So uh, the compile fail is marked with a big red uh, warning like it's supposed to fail, and ignore is just like, ah, it's not run, so, and it, you know, whatever. So no run doesn't run the test, but it compiles it. It's very convenient when you have uh, I.O., for instance. Uh, the Rust one actually isn't mandatory at all, but it's always nice to specify that uh, it's a Rust code block. But like I said, by default, if not specified, it will be Rust. So it's 
not very useful in itself. And uh, the should panic is actually, uh, in case you run, you want it to panic. If you don't panic, it's a failure. And uh, everything else, uh, like uh, for instance, if you have a, a block uh, with a markdown text or everything, it will be interpreted as, uh, as another language uh, string. So if your language is called uh, should panic, you will have an issue. But uh, for, aside, uh, besides that, it will be fine. Oh. But uh, that's not uh, all. So we, well, I worked a lot on uh, making uh, RestDoc work uh, with uh, no JavaScript. So if you don't have JavaScript, uh, you will have a very not so good looking uh, page uh, rendering, but you will have it. Everything will be available. It will work. Uh, the search. So you can search uh, through uh, the Rust documentation of your crate. It doesn't require an internet connection. It works uh, locally. It's uh, JavaScript. Uh, the downside is that we have uh, a pretty big uh, search uh, index, but uh, at least it works without internet. So if you don't have JavaScript uh, enabled, it won't work, obviously. Uh, like I said, you don't need uh, the internet connection, which is uh, something I'm uh, really strongly uh, enforcing because uh, a lot of people would like to have, for instance, uh, external search with the pro and cons, everything, and uh, some more JavaScript uh, bigger, like Ember uh, frameworks. It's a debate uh, in going. You have uh, a source code viewer, and I will go back a bit on this one later. Uh, for now, it's pretty simple. I'm starting to make it uh, more nice and uh, user-friendly. And uh, the goal here is mostly to uh, allow people to have a direct mapping on the you see a function. You can click on SRC. You will go to the definition, and you can see how it's actually implemented. Uh, now you ask, also have the whole uh, file uh, tree and everything. So you can go through the files and everything. So what I was saying about the source code viewer was that uh, currently it's very simple. You just have a syntax uh, highlighting. And uh, it'd be nice to be able, for instance, when you hover a type, uh, to be able to see where it's used and where it's defined. Uh, it remains to be done. And uh, we have a lot of debates on how it should look like. And, a lot of things uh, have uh, to be uh, still uh, determined. Uh, we're not so sure yet how it will be looked like, but a lot of things are going uh, there in uh, not so long. And so I, say, I was saying the settings too. Uh, the settings uh, allow you to have a more precise uh, exp uh, browsing experience. So for instance, uh, some people asked uh, for the first element, with, when you have a search with only uh, one uh, result, they wanted uh, to go, uh, it was uh, called uh, get lucky or something. And if you uh, have only one result, it will go to this result without any uh, search page rendering or anything. Again, they earn time like that. I'm not so sure, but whatever. Uh, a lot of people were complaining that uh, the type's definition, when it's available, was uh, collapsed by default. We uh, now allow people to pick exactly which types they want to be collapsed or not. And uh, yeah, a lot of other settings are there. And mostly the settings, uh, settings appear when we have a huge debate with not so much uh, people uh, taking uh, one side uh, precisely when uh, we don't know really if people want it by default or not. So we just make a new setting, and that's pretty much it. Uh, something I was pushing for a long time, the Sims, uh, were merged uh, a, few late, uh, a few years ago. And now you can actually add your own Sim, which is pretty convenient. And you have uh, some rules to follow, like uh, you have to implement all the CSS rules they, uh, they have. Otherwise, uh, you won't be able uh, to uh, add it, and it will be uh, just uh, an error at the compiler. But you can add uh, your own Sims. It's pretty <laughs> simple. And uh, as most uh, feature, at some point, I should write the documentation on how to actually do it. But that's it. And customizable, actually, you can pretty much change everything through uh, the command line, adding your own style files on CSS, JavaScript, HTML, even, if you want. And uh, I don't know if people know the ponies uh, create uh, on uh, docs.rs, but at some point, you should take a look. It's interesting. Let's say that. And uh, 
the goal of this uh, was uh, at the, uh, the origin uh, to be able uh, to allow to have more specific experience, everything that uh, users might want. For instance, uh, if you wanted your documentation to look more like a book than a documentation, we didn't see much people actually use it, except, of course, uh, the standard library and stuff that I'm doing myself. So at some point, yeah. I think uh, what uh, likes uh, there is, uh, once again, documentation, which is kind of ironic. So yeah, very quickly, what's coming next? Uh, so like I said, more interactive uh, source code viewer. Uh, the automatic click generation based on the type name. For, uh, for instance, you just uh, put a string, and it will uh, render the link for the string. You don't have to do it yourself anymore. Uh, more output format supported. So that's, this comes from uh, people who were uh, debating uh, about uh, how the page should look like. And uh, to fix uh, this issue, I, was, I proposed to generate uh, JSON as well uh, as uh, HTML. So it's ongoing and it's taking a lot of time. Uh, we now have a conditional uh, condition uh, documentation. So you can just say, uh, if I'm on this platform, I don't want uh, this uh, thing to be uh, documented in, uh, for some reason. And uh, now the problem is on cargo. And I need to go back on it uh, later. And uh, with the doc aliases, which is for now only used on uh, the STD library. So for instance, if you're looking for the um, upper hand, you will have uh, the reference uh, page, uh, which will be uh, returned in the search. Yeah, so you see it perfectly. <laughs>